Our next speaker is Esperanza Garcia. Esperanza was born and raised in Cebu in the Philippines, and she's been active as a global youth leader, speaker, on renewable energy campaigner, and climate policy negotiator, as well as an educator. Esperanza has received awards for youth leadership and has been invited to keynote speak at international conferences, including at the UN and various TEDx events. In the Philippines, she's campaigned for the enactment of climate change laws and environmental governments. Esperanza, please come up. We are also a minority in the renewable energy field, and I am here to tell her story. This is Constance Akale, a Ugandan farmer. She is a mother of seven, and she's a community activist. Her village suffered from floods and drought. But she is not a story of devastation. She is a story of hope because she travels the world urging world leaders to build sustainable solutions. She empowers women in her community to act on climate change. Having engaged with the youth of today in the global work that I have done, I have seen a generation that is increasingly strong on social and environmental awareness. I have never seen a group more passionate than the International Youth Climate Movement of the United Nations Climate Change uh, Conference, known as the strongest and most organized youth movement of, in, in the history of our time. As stakeholders, it is important that we represent our voice and something that concerns our future. We work together, we lobby to governments, we raise awareness through media and implement real world campaigns. The energy of the young people, the passion that's being shared is more important than the UN climate change negotiations. We inspire each other, we look after each other, we build global climate change negotiations and educate more youth on this climate change um, awareness programs. I was so much so inspired by the international youth climate movement that I founded my own national climate change campaign in my country, the Philippines, and built the Philippine Youth Climate Movement. And we have educated 50,000 young Filipinos in the span of four months and, and awarded youth climate heroes all over the country. Um, with a population of almost 100 million people, the Philippines is situated in the Coral Triangle, the world's center for marine biodiversity. The Coral Triangle is a triangular shape that is referred to as the Amazon of the seas because of its incredible amount of marine diversity and coral ecosystems that populate this place. So protecting the Coral Triangle affects lives of millions of species, including our own. Like most developing countries, the Philippines plays a minor role in global carbon emissions, yet we suffer a high cost. With over a third of our population in poverty, we lose 5% of our economy to storms. Typhoon Haiyan alone, the reconstruction cost estimated $5.8 billion. So our climate change impacts are vulnerable. We are vulnerable to El Nino effects. The sea surface temperatures that are expected to rise one to four degrees Celsius leads to more powerful storms because the storms get the strength from the heat rising. We have ocean acidification and endangering the livelihood of fishermen. We have the four to six meters of sea level rise can submerge low-lying communities like Tacloban City. The unpredictability of increasing rainfalls, intensification of drought in the country makes it more challenging for agriculture and tropical cyclones. We were just hit by the world's strongest cyclone in the history of our time, which in which 10,000 million people had died. 16 million people were impacted. That's half the population here in Canada. 4.1 million people lost their homes. With both the oceans and atmosphere rising, there is broad scientific consensus that these typhoons are only going to increase, and yet the Philippines is considered the world leaders in renewable energy. 43% of the country's primary energy requirements is renewable energy. Most of our renewable energy is hydropower and geothermal. We're considered the most developed renewable energy market in Southeast Asia. We have the first wind farm and the largest solar farm in Southeast Asia, and we're number two in the world in terms of geothermal producers. The country has committed to an ambitious 50% by 2030. 
30. Through the implementation of the Renewable Energy Act and the National Renewable Energy Program, we are pushing for a threefold increase in renewable energy, increasing 5,400 megawatts to 15,400 megawatts by 2030. I need some water. <laughs> Since the Renewable Energy Act in 2008 was signed, there have been 2,500 megawatts of renewable energy projects that have been approved. In a country where a fourth of our 15 million people do not have access to electricity, importing 90, thank you sir, 90% of our fuel needs, developing renewable energy resources will reduce countries' dependence on imported fossil fuels and boost economic growth. With the Philippine Climate Change Commission and World Watch Institute, we are working towards building and shifting the electricity grid to 100% by 2050. This is definitely one of the most ambitious goals worldwide, but with a country that has 20,000 megawatts of potential, we can make this happen. Palawan is one of the 7,107 islands that, is being power, that is, has plans on being powered by 100% renewable energy. The island is not connected to the grid and is relying on diesel and bunker fuels. Renewable energy makes sense because we have the highest electricity rates in Asia, and Palawan alone has doubled that, that, that high electricity rate. Clark, green city in Pampanga, has a 50-year plan to be the first green city and smart city in the Philippines. We are building all facilities, 35,000 hectares, um, using renewable energy and environmental friendly principles in these buildings. Then we have entrepreneurs in the Philippines like Leandro Labista, the mother of Senator Legarda, who has left Yale as a junior at 21 years old and has now 200 megawatts of solar projects by the end of this year. This shows how crucial it is to engage young people like myself and those young at heart in these climate change and renewable energy discussions. Now I provided examples of women, young people, develop, people from developing countries who are building change solutions. I hope these stories inspire you as they have I. This is my story. At the age of 18, I had a daughter and she has been inspiring me to build a better future for her. Whew. And <laughs> I am proud to say that in those 10 years building this future for her, I am a young person. I'm a woman. I'm a person from a developing country. And as of recent, a founder and CEO of my own renewable energy company. Thank you very much. <laughs>